Well, deja vu, back at the airport. We're going to New Hampshire this time to install a CDK 700 for uh, school. I'm gonna grab a flight. Should be there about 2 p.m. and we'll do a pre-site checklist. So I just got here to Phillips Exeter Academy in New Hampshire. I'm gonna double check that all the pier and accessories are organized for the install tomorrow. We'll start the crane lift at about seven in the morning and we're definitely looking forward to this one. Should be fun for all the students and they're gonna have some great time doing astrophotography and research with it. Okay, so we're here inside the dome for the 0.7 meter install. Behind me is the actual pier with the bolts. So before we do the installation, we need to make sure that the south mark, which is this bolt, is gonna be aligned due south, which it is. And I'm gonna organize the actual nuts and washers so we have even spacing, and that means the 0.7 meter will be installed level, and we'll finalize the level tomorrow once the system is actually attached. All right, crane's just pulling in. It's gonna get lined up. Gotta find a safe position so it can actually reach the dome, especially on this little construction site. Ample room, but it's gonna back in and find a nice spot to level off. Threaded rod is all ready to go. We've used a bubble level to make sure all three of them are approximately at level. We have the washers up top. Next up, we'll crane in the CDK 700 base. All right, crates just arrived. We're gonna start unboxing them and then we'll slowly get everything rigged up on the crane and on top of the pier. All right, we have everything uncrated. We put the shackles up top for the eye bolts here. And go ahead and get it rigged up. Okay, so this no wrap mark in the Northern Hemisphere, this goes due South. In the Southern Hemisphere, this bolt goes due North. So we're just slowly lowering it down on that south mark, which is on the left-hand side of the pier. All right, so we just lowered it down. We're in the northern hemisphere, so the no wrap position is aimed on the southern side of the pier. We're gonna go ahead and make sure everything is level with the bubble level, and we'll tighten all the bolts. So we just leveled the system, and now we're gonna tighten down all the bolts. The azimuth base is now attached to the pier and tightened down. We're going to go outside and lift up the altitude axis now and then attach that onto the azimuth base. Okay, we have the crane with tension on the altitude axis and we slowly made sure that we connected the two Molex connectors and we're gonna feed them down through this hole. So make sure you don't pinch them while it's going down and keep your fingers clear. And then that'll make sure that these cables don't get pinched. These are our temperature and dew heater controls up to the secondary and the ambient temperature. So we have the crane with tension on the altitude axis. The larger alignment peg is on this left-hand side. I connected the two Molex connectors and I fed them down through the hole. So we're slowly gonna make sure that the cables don't pinch and we'll feed it down and attach the altitude axis bolts around the base. Okay, the altitude axis has been tightened down with the bolts. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and loosen the azimuth locking bolts. So we took out the few bolts that are covering up these holes. And we have our T-handle. And sometimes you have to seat it down in a few times before you find the bolt hole. And we'll go ahead and loosen this. And there's four of them. We'll go around, loosen the four, and that's gonna free up the azimuth locking system, which prevents it from being damaged during shipment. Okay, we just loosened the back two azimuth locking bolts. Don't forget the one underneath the cable tray. Sometimes that one hides, but I got that one undone. And you can see that the azimuth motor now rotates freely. So what I've done now is take all the four leaf shutters and I've attached them to the actuators. And now I'm gonna open up and remove the covers over the primary mirror. From there, I'll attach the laser adapter onto each port and I'll check to make sure that the laser is returning on center. Okay, so I look down at the primary mirror and you can see the light returning, bouncing back onto the target. And I can see it's just a little bit off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the tip tilt just a little bit to bring that laser light back onto itself onto the target. I took a closer look at the alignment and what I found out is I need to do a full M2 alignment, which means I had to take the shutter actuators off, take the bolts off, I'm gonna remove the panel and on the fans, there's gonna be Molex connectors for 12 volts I'm gonna remove. And then I will put the laser on the back plate and make sure that M2 sends the laser back down onto the target. But first, I'm gonna get access to the tertiary mirror by removing these panels. Okay, so I have both panels removed. I'm about to remove the baffle and tertiary mirror. Before I do that, I'm gonna put the covers back over the aperture ring to protect the primary mirror. Notice that there is the primary mirror retaining ring. You wanna loosen that by one half turn. That's gonna make sure that there's no astigmatism on the primary mirror. Okay, so I got the baffle off of M3. It helps having two people to do that, to shimmy it up over the system. I'm gonna remove the electronics below and there's three bolts that are holding M3 in place. I'm gonna remove those and then I'm gonna lift out M3. Okay, we have the three cables. Motor one, motor two, 12 volt for the dew heater. And then we have the temp sensor data and I'm gonna remove that Molex connector. I loosen the bolts and now I'm ready to go ahead and lift M3 out. We safely removed M3 with a primary mirror cover, of course. Next, I'm gonna attach the laser adapter to the back plate, and then I'll look up at M2, do tip tilt, and get that laser centered back on the target. All right, I got the laser adapter attached to the back plate. I'm gonna go on the ladder, and I'm gonna adjust the tip tilt of M2 until that laser is centered back on the target. Now that M2's been aligned, we put M3 back into place and connected the cables that run to M3. Next, we'll reinstall the baffle and then continue reassembling the system with the actual panels on the side of the system. Okay, we got the first panel on. We're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. Again, make sure that you connect the 12 volt DC for the fans and then re-put on the panel and attach the shutter actuators and button everything up. Now that M2 has been aligned and the panels are back attached, we installed the dovetails back on and we double checked port one and port two. Laser fell back onto the target, which is awesome. Next up, we're gonna run the cables down from the azimuth base to the control cabinet of the CDK 700. Okay, we fist down all the cables and we're gonna start connecting them into the mount. They all will be labeled so you can attach them into the respective port. For the USB accessories, we installed an Icron Ranger and we have the USB B end that will go into the hub here on the side of the mount. Okay, we have all the cables connected here inside the control panel of the CDK 700. We'll go downstairs now and connect the respective ends into the cabinet. Okay, we have all the cables connected in our respective spots, firmly tightened. We're gonna go ahead and close the panel, tighten up the bolts, and then we'll go ahead, connect power and turn it on. 
All the cables are connected downstairs in the control panel. Upstairs, I double checked everything. They're tight, ready to go. EFAs are powered off until we get the accessories connected. And we'll go downstairs, turn on the system. Okay, we're down here setting up the camera and filter wheel. We're gonna be running an FLI 16803 with a CFW3 filter wheel. We have our secure fit extenders. We're just putting those on and we're gonna get that set up on the 700. All right, so we got the FLI CCD mounted with filters, filter wheel and adapters. Tomorrow we'll get everything finalized and then we got a flight home. So hopefully the weather holds out to fly because it looks like it's gonna to snow tomorrow. Well, last day at the site. We're obviously really glad we didn't have to do the installation and crane lift this morning. Just a little bit of snow last night and still. <laughs> Probably got a few inches. Now it's just ice pelleting. <laughs> Today we're just gonna wrap up, do a little bit of user training, make sure all the systems check out, and then drive safely to the airport in this lovely wintry weather. <laughs> so we're powered up, connected to the telescope. We're using the USB to ethernet adapter. Everything's connected. Now we're following along in the PWI2 software user manual, and we're gonna calibrate the sensors and do a little bit of user training once we're fully initialized. Okay, so we're doing the azimuth rotational calibration now. We backed the motor off by about 20 degrees and we're inputting that into the azimuth counterclockwise limit, track limit, and go-to limit, and we're gonna click save. Okay, so we did the counterclockwise rotational adjustment now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna rotate it counterclockwise all the way around until it gently hits the hard stop. And then we'll back the system off by about 20 degrees and we'll set those values into PWI2. Okay, so I just hit the hard stop. I can feel it engaging right now. So I'm gonna work with my operator, see what value that's at for the hard stop within the software. And I'm gonna move it backwards clockwise by about 20 degrees. Okay, our hard stop was at negative 150. So that means we rotated it backwards until the azimuth readout is saying negative 130. And he'll enter that data into the counterclockwise limit tracking and go to limits and click save. Okay, now you can see that the go-to limits, the tracking, are all lined up on one value, backed up safely away from the hard stops. All right, that's all she wrote. We got everything synced up. Clients trained on how to use the equipment. Time to head off to the airport and get back home.